Whether you're a seasoned Ninth World traveler or new to the wondrous world of Numenera, this video will focus on helping you break down and make the most of the official Numenera character sheets from Monty Cook Games. Stick around until the end for some of my own practices and preferences for detailing critical info about your character on these very sheets, as well as this video's viewer question, which you can answer in the comments at the end of the video. This video will focus on the four different kinds of character sheets available for Numenera. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry. With the exception of the Destiny character sheet that leaves space for crafting materials and the community mechanics, these are all based on the same rules, the same system, and will work in the same way. It really just becomes a question of which art style you prefer and how you like your information to be presented to you. As a note, for the purposes of this video, I will not be going into the community sheet provided in the character sheet pack, nor will I go into detail on the character portfolios. Those sheets will be covered elsewhere on the channel, so be sure to subscribe to The Infinite Construct for more Numenera and science fantasy content. The four sheets we'll be taking a look at in this video include the Numenera Discovery Character Sheet, Destiny Sheet, the Legacy Numenera Character Sheet, and the Into the Ninth World Sheet. Also, before we get into the first one, much of what I cover here applies to other Cypher System games, so if the weird futurescape of the Ninth World isn't exactly what you're looking for, those concepts and principles will likely apply to the other universes MCG has created. This video will be going in order of the character sheets as they appear, skipping the community sheet, in the character sheets product available for free download from MCG in the links below. Official Numenera character sheets are presented in a horizontal format, typically divided into three columns. Starting with the Discovery Sheet, we'll take a look at the central column on the first page. This area contains your character's name and sentence on top, while the middle provides space to keep track of your stats. The bottom area provides space to list your character's tier, how many levels of effort they can apply in one action, how much XP they have, recovery roll information, as well as boxes to check off on the damage track. The larger spaces for keeping track of your current pool totals is great for keeping a tally, writing and erasing large numbers, or some other way that you may find helpful to track your pool points. You should reserve the smaller pool circle for your pool maximum, and use the larger space to track what you've spent in any way that makes sense for you. Next to your armor score, you also have a space to fill in the extra cost to your speed pool if you're wearing armor. This is a great way to remind yourself that, should you be wearing armor, there will be an added cost to any expenditure of speed effort. This is laid out in detail on page 95 of Numenera Discovery. This middle area is the space you want to focus on when considering putting effort into tasks or taking damage. This is the very core of your character, and it is fittingly right in the center of the page. The left-hand side includes spaces for you to list your character's abilities. As a bit of a hint, while the setting of Numenera considers ciphers to be a kind of equipment, the actual mechanics of the game, from a sort of meta perspective, view them as one-time use character abilities similar in function to magic scrolls, wands, or even spell slots in other games. For this reason, it makes sense to have them on the same area of the page as your abilities. Your special abilities section is used for noting all of the abilities you get from your character's type and focus. List what information you think is necessary. If you have the book on hand during play, sometimes all you need to do is list the name of the ability and the page number, which while I'll go into more detail on this at the end of the video concerning best practices, it's really helpful to get into the habit of listing page numbers, as it will help those moments when you're not sure about the specifics of an ability or rule. Don't remember how Fleet of Foot works? Well, it's on page 31 of Numenera Discovery. Keeping track of abilities like this is a really efficient way to keep the game moving, even when you're not sure about a certain rule. Your cipher section is used for the rotating set of abilities you'll collect and use over the course of a character's life, as well as the maximum amount of ciphers you can carry at any given time. Depending on the feel and tone of the game you're playing, you may list the name of the ciphers or just write down their physical form, level, and what they do. In some games, you may refer to ciphers by their actual name, like Time Dilation Nodule, or you might describe the same Cypher is just a crystal nodule that has an effect on your armor or weapons. Depending on how you, the other players, and your GM wish to play and the language you wish to use in your game works, using the direct names or just describing them as strange objects of power that don't necessarily have names but functions is totally your call. Regardless of how you write down the information in this section, you'll always rely on the left side of your character sheet for your more unique powers that often come at a cost, that of either spending pool points to activate them 
or burning ciphers to get their desired effect. The right side of the character sheet lists your skills, available equipment, and attack functions if you're into that sort of thing. The skills and inability section is where you'll list what your character is trained in, specialized in, or has an inability in. You may also use this to list what categories of knowledge or specific skill sets you are practiced in. To jump into the Cypher System rulebook for just a moment, being practiced in a specific skill set or field of knowledge means that you're neither particularly good or bad at this activity, meaning that there's no effect on the difficulty. I prefer to list areas where your character is practiced with in the notes section on the other side of the character sheet, but more on that later in the video. Your equipment section is where you'll indicate any currency you're carrying as well as any other item you think will factor into the game. For example, you may wish to write down that your character has clothing, or you could save space and just assume that your character is likely wearing clothes. This is down to personal taste, but my preference is to write down equipment I know I'll be using often. Your attacks can also be used to either list special abilities that really only have an attack function, as well as the weapons you're carrying and what effect they have on the difficulty and how much damage they do. Flipping over to the back, the background column is a great place to either write down some of your own prose for your character's backstory, but it's also a good place to list all of your character's background connection and other information you receive from character creation, but doesn't exactly fit in the specific sections that outline core mechanics. The notes section is useful for jotting down important names and places during a game, but that can also be used in character creation as the place to write stuff down that you're not sure of where they go just yet. Anytime you hear an ability or something you get from your character and you don't know where to put it in the proper space on the character sheet, just jot it down in the notes section and you can sort that out later. The middle of the sheet provides space for the artists of the Ninth World to sketch out their character, but it could also just be used for more space to take notes. The advancement section is where you'll check off progression towards your character's next tier, with the standard four options of boosting stat pools, increasing how many levels of effort you can apply to a task, improving your edge, learning a new skill, or any of the other options you may choose for advancement listed on page 128 of Numenera Discovery. The destiny character sheet is mostly identical to the discovery sheet. The reverse side however, has a section for crafting materials and plans, and a section for followers. Later in the video, I'll explain why I think this sheet should be used regardless of whether you're using destiny mechanics or not. The crafting area is useful for listing all iotum, units of materials, and units of parts that your character may have on them, plus any Numenera plans. The followers section is good for tracking followers that the Arcus type may accumulate as they go up in tier, or any character types or foci that give you a companion. If you are playing a game with the destiny mechanics, whether that includes the full crafting and community rules, or just the new character types, this sheet is the one you should have available, particularly if you are playing an Arcus, Rite, or Delve. Since there were very few rules changes from the Legacy Numenera book to Numenera Discovery and Destiny, the Legacy sheets still work with practically zero adjustment. The first page of the Legacy Character Sheet lists your character's name and sentence, and an area for notes and an area for background information, similar to the ones that are on the reverse side of the Numenera Discovery Sheet. The flip side reveals a very different layout for much of the same information that's in Numenera Discovery. Your skills section has an artistic representation that connects it to a related pool. For example, a persuasion task where a character applies effort would require points from the intellect pool, where an athletics task would likely come from might or effort to be spent. These stats provide a smaller area to keep track of your points, while the attack area has a more traditional RPG style of listing the effect of the attack on the difficulty and the damage. In this sheet, you can use one section of the pool boxes to list your maximum for that stat, with the other half, either right or left, depending on your preference, for the current amount that you have. Special abilities have their own section in the lower left, with all carried equipment taking residence in the right side of the sheet, and with ciphers on top, equipment in the middle, and artifacts and oddities listed below. For those who are using this sheet with destiny mechanics, you could always use this area to list your Iotum and Numenera plans. What is notably missing from this sheet is a dedicated space to track your character's advancement. This will likely need to be entered in manually. With a slightly different style than the legacy Numenera character sheet, but very similar, the first page of the Into the Ninth World character sheet is identical to the legacy Numenera sheet. The second page is where things differ. The layout remains largely the same, but this time skills are given an option to list and tick off in abilities, while the pools are larger, allowing for more room to track your pool points over the course of a game. 
you can either list your pool maximum on top or on the bottom. The center of this sheet also contains a section to check off character advancement. This, combined with an easier way of tracking in abilities, a larger space to write in your pool totals, kind of makes this sheet a little bit more functional to use, but this is all down to personal preference. In this last section, I'm going to introduce a few best practice tips for recording information on your character sheet. Starting with your character abilities, while it may be too much to write out some of the specific descriptions by hand, the most essential information you should record on your sheet is the name of the ability, its point cost for activation, what pool that activation pulls from, and whether the ability is an enabler or an action. Having this information clearly written out on your character sheet will, at a moment's glance, tell you the name of the ability, should you need to look it up, how much it costs to activate it, whether this ability requires an action from your character, or is activated in some other way. In the Cypher system, reviewing your abilities when thinking of doing something is often made significantly more manageable by knowing whether a certain ability requires an action or is already in effect, as many enablers are. Also, I recommend, as mentioned earlier, listing the page number with the book name that the ability comes from. For ease of use, skip abbreviating page with a PG or a P and just put down the page number in parentheses alone. This is a quick, simple way to jot down and reference a page number. On the Discovery and Destiny character sheets, and to a certain degree the Into the Ninth World sheets, you're afforded a lot of space to write in your current pool amount. Some folks like to write down each cost, maybe separated by a comma, others like to keep a tally. You could also draw in an amount of circles or boxes that add up to your pool maximum and cross or check off each one as you spend points. There's also nothing wrong with just writing a large number and erasing it and rewriting it every time you subtract points. Whatever method helps you keep track of how many points you're spending is ultimately the best one for you. There are no wrong answers here. Like abilities, the more direct you can notate a skill in the skill section, the quicker you can factor that skill into a task or scenario in the game. My preference is to jot down the name of the skill in whatever way I understand it, followed by an initial for trained, specialized, or an inability in parentheses or circled, followed by the name of the stat pool that this ability relates to. This allows me to, at a glance, look at the skill section to know the name of a skill, how it affects the difficulty, and what pool it pulls from should I choose to apply effort. Regardless of whether you're using the crafting rules, I believe that any Numenera game benefits from having Iodum, as listed starting on page 110 of Numenera Destiny in your game. It makes the world a bit more rich, with different materials that have scarcity and value baked into their mechanical existence. This way you can have objects of value and purpose that are more divisible and expensive than the currency that's in the Ninth World, and have some unique effects such as Mimetic Gel's ability to replicate other objects. Iodum can slot right into just about any Numenera game as a sort of in-between category of Numenera between oddities and ciphers, and having that crafting section there to list Iodum can come in handy for just about any game and any character type. I recommend using the Followers section to also keep track of important NPCs. If these characters don't fall under the Follower type as it would pertain to, say, the Arcus abilities, you can just write in NPC in parentheses next to their entry, or even cross out Followers and just write Important NPCs as the name of this section. This is also a great space to use for characters who have companions, such as those with the Control's Beasts focus. For scenarios like this, as well as Followers, you can list their name followed by their level, how much health they have, how much armor they have, if any, and whether or not there are modifications, such as a companion who may be a level 3 creature but functions at level 4 for stealth tasks, as an example. There's no need for a companion stat block or extra sheet unless that's what you want. Here, you can quickly communicate all of the mechanical information the game will use in a short sentence. Given the way that XP tends to work in a Cypher system game, my preference is to use separate physical objects such as MCG's own Cypher decks, random tokens, coins, or even a dedicated XP die similar to the spin-down dice used in games like Magic the Gathering. Either way, I like to save the XP section on any character sheet to record how much XP the character has at the end of the session, reserving the physical objects to track XP during gameplay. Numenera's florid character sheets can sometimes feel a bit more daunting than they really are. Breaking down the different sections and coming up with some clever ways of keeping track of information, however, will be of great help on your journeys into the Ninth World. But with all of that said, which Numenera character sheet do you prefer? Or how do you like to keep track of your character's stats and information? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helps you focus on the areas that matter to your character, 
please consider liking and subscribing to The Infinite Construct for more Numenera, Cypher System, and science fantasy gaming content.